So that is where you are. <coughs> so now if you look at this existence, there is already harmony in existence, right? Because the whole existence is in the form of coexistence. So at the level of existence, the harmony is already there. You don't have to construct this harmony, create this harmony. In fact, you are also by way of this coexistence. And therefore, all that you can do and you need to do is to understand this harmony and live in this harmony. Understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. <coughs> So nothing great, right? Nothing extraordinary. This is something which is very ordinary for everyone of us to do. Right? So Dala was many times mentioning about these ordinary people. <laughs> so you can see, this is very ordinary thing for us to do, right? And it is essential for every human being, not extraordinary people. And this is maximum that you can do. Nothing more. What more will you do? So we keep saying that this is the minimum, this is the maximum, right? Therefore, this is exactly what we need to do. But after the death, if the self, <coughs> self who uh, remains uh, in coexistence in this case, won't the self feel lonely? <laughs> you see this no, we are used to such things. If it is having the understanding of coexistence, right? Then where is the loneliness? <laughs> if we have this understanding of the coexistence and the feeling of coexistence, what does it mean? I mean, coexistence is everything, right? This space is all pervading, right? I am one of the units in this space, right? And by virtue of being submerged in this space, I am related to every unit in nature, right? every unit in existence. So I am able to recognize this relationship and fulfill this relationship with every unit. So where is the loneliness? In fact, after understanding this coexistence, right, there is no way to have this loneliness. Even if you try, you can't get rid of this, you know, other units being in relationship. Because they are there, right? The units are there, the space is there, this is space. These units are in space, right? And space is all pervading. Therefore, I am related to every other unit. There is no loneliness in the whole existence. The whole existence is in the form of coexistence. How will you get rid of the other? So even this feeling that I can get rid of the other, I can shut down the other, undermine the other, neglect the other, all this is not possible now. And that is why whenever you think of such things, you feel unhappy. Whenever you think of loneliness, you feel unhappy. Whenever you think of neglecting others, undermining others, right? shut down others, you feel unhappy within. Why? Because this is not in line with this coexistence. So where are you thinking of it, right? The feeling of opposition, the feeling of neg you know, neglecting someone, Undermining someone, right? Discarding someone. All this makes you unhappy. Why? Because you are embedded in coexistence and this feeling is not in line with this coexistence. I'm just imagining myself within the uh, human order. A unit, as a unit. Uh, now, if I uh, practice these uh, human values that I've learned, so currently, uh, as we have highlighted, that there is 
Though uh, there is little bit of a disharmony among the human order and then the rest of the unit. So generally that means the human, there, there is a less coexistence among the human and the rest of the unit. Now if I <coughs> try to change myself, right now I am in the coexistence, although in a negative state. And then if I try to change myself, I would perhaps feel a little bit away uh, from the rest and there would be lesser coexistence with the rest of the humans because they would still want to carry out in a uh, disharmonious way. Now I may feel a little bit unhappy. Then later on, again, because the human as a whole, they are failing to coexist with the rest of the world, the rest of the unit, so there will be some interaction, uh, reaction among the unit and then the nature will act upon the human and then there will be some problem. So then I again get among the humans and then feel unhappiness, then I get double unhappiness. No? What would be your <laughs> <laughs> I told this long story for six days <coughs> because I thought that if I only said this, you will not understand. <laughs> so I had to go, go all the way, you know, starting from the individual, the self, the body, the coexistence, you know, the relationship, the trust, and all that and such. And then finally we concluded this. <coughs> But then we are back to the same question. <laughs> so I'm going to take this day again. <laughs> you see, from the very first day we are saying that if you look at human beings, right, though they are not aware of their natural acceptance, okay, and their desired thought and expectations are guided by preconditioning and sensation. But if you look at their natural acceptance, it is for harmony, it is for coexistence, it is for relationship. Right? And now finally we have traced the root of it, right? Now if with that clarity has come, I would see that now in existence, every unit is by way of coexistence. Right? This is by way of coexistence. This is by way of coexistence, this is by way of coexistence, and this is more than 99% right? of nature. This human being is less than 1% right? So 99% or more than 99% is already in coexistence. So they are not going to create problems, they are going to all be with me, right? This is coexistence. The human being is the only, you know, unit which is in trouble, right? And what is the trouble? It is not able to understand this coexistence and live in this coexistence. But they also have the natural acceptance for coexistence, for harmony. Right. So if I understand this coexistence and I start living with this feeling of coexistence, right? It is not that the other people will not, you know, kind of accept me and my behavior. Right? They will accept me and my behavior. Because they already have this natural acceptance for the coexistence. Of course, it might not fall in line with some of their preconditionings. Right? So they will ask in the form of question. And it is your responsibility to clarify them. Right? But they will feel comfortable with you. Right? That is what is going to happen. And this is what is happening, right? These hundred people coming from different parts of Bhutan, right? And sitting here, you know, for six days, seven days, eight days, right? Listening to this whole thing, okay? Not because they are getting any physical facility, right? Because they have this natural acceptance for the coexistence, for the harmony. And here we are talking about, you know, this harmony, about this coexistence, right? Which is very comforting for them, which is very soothing for them because that is what is their natural acceptance deep, deep inside. Right? And as you are sitting here and listening to this, okay, and you are finding that it is making sense to you, you start immediately ringing up your you know, family members and friends, you know, that you must do it next time, like that. So not only that you are doing, right? you are now 
talking to so many of your friends <laughs> so you know asking them to attend so it is not that if you are talk, understand the coexistence and you start living in coexistence you will get in contact with other people <coughs> the other poor people also have a natural acceptance for this right so they will accept you your behavior they may not do be able to do the same behavior right because if they don't have the right understanding they will not be able to do it but as far as their acceptance is concerned right they will have an acceptance for your behavior right and if your behavior is proper it will be comforting for them then they would also like to understand from you so that is what is going to happen right and that is how the education sanskar process will start and that is how this understanding will multiply in a natural manner so you don't have to worry that if you start <coughs> <laughs> understanding this quite distant and living in this quite distant that you will get in contact with other people you will be in harmony with these people they may not be in harmony with you <laughs> <laughs> but you will be in harmony and your behavior of this quite distant will be fulfilling for them and therefore they will accept you but it will be difficult to do suddenly they come strike me my precondition might to react <laughs> but I will not accept you. Why? You see, this, you think you know they will come and strike. Why will they strike you? Because somebody strikes you, a lot of things happen, right? It is not that somebody just comes and strikes you, right? Lot of transactions take place. Okay, lot of transaction of opposition, not of harmony. They know that it is heating up the expression. Otherwise, how the hell is mad? See, I tell you, even these mad people have that minimum sense. <laughs> <laughs> even these mad people have got some minimum sense. That is how they are heating up their body, right? In fact, you will see most of these mad people are very healthy people. <laughs> <laughs> You must have seen that, right? Yeah. So I think they are able to manage their body better than <laughs> so-called not mad people, right? I have actually one question. Uh, I have a precondition that uh, I unit. Uh, I unit uh, any unit. If we actually disintegrate, uh, it ultimately doesn't actually exist. Uh, for example, uh, if a body is uh, disintegrated, I think the last basic uh, unit could be a cell. Or for that matter, uh, a metal, an atom could be the best unit. So can we further disintegrate cell or atom? That's much. Thank you. <coughs> That's what I'm saying. You know, we have to start again the sixth day. Because. Now it has started striking to many people. <laughs> no, they have started striking again. Now we have started. And that is why we realize that people that at least after every six months they must attend one shiva, one workshop, because. <coughs> Many of these questions become relevant question for you after the seven days. We already discussed these issues, right? But then we were while we were discussing this, it was not relevant for you. <laughs> so you took off. <coughs> But it is good, you know, that at least after seven days. <laughs> this has become relevant for you. <laughs> this workshop is successful in that sense. <laughs> so we will study about this continuity of the self in terms of its need, in terms of its activity, in terms of the fulfillment of the need. Right? Similarly, you know, the temporality of the body right, of any material thing for that matter. its need 
its activity, its fulfillment of the need, all these are temporary in nature. In fact, what we have been doing till now is we have been equating this self to the body. Right? So that is one big problem. And we have not been able to notice even the small things. Right? For example, this fear of death. Who has the fear of death? The self or the body?
and you have the understanding of the reality, right? What does this one and two would look like? Okay. So I will fill that up, you know, that will give you an idea. <coughs> Clarity of this whole existence as coexistence. Right? When I am able to see that this is the way the whole existence is in the form of coexistence, this is called realization. Now you can see if you have this clarity, is there any variation now? So there is no relation there, right? It is something which is ever present. Right? <coughs> then the second two is the understanding. This is understanding of the characteristic of four orders in nature. Realization is going to be definite and this understanding is going to be definite. And now if I have this right, you know, if I have the realization and the understanding, then you can see that my desire, thought and expectations will now be governed by this. This is the correct route, right? So this is the route which is crossed, right? This is the route which is also crossed, okay? Because it is dictated by the other. This is the correct route, right? So, if you look at the cell, okay? And, you know, what we have been calling a real cell, okay? What it would mean is that I have the realization of this coexistence in existence, I have the understanding of these four orders, right? Understanding of their characteristic, of their inheritance, of their activity. Therefore, I know what I have to do with myself, with other human beings, what I have to do with animals, what I have to do with the pranic order, what I have to do with the physical order. And what I have to do with them is what becomes my desire, right? So my desire are now decided by my realization and understanding. So it will be in line with this coexistence and with this harmony. Right? And for fulfillment of this desire, I am working out the details in terms of analysis. Right? In terms of that, you know, harmony, I now decide what I have to do in terms of behavior and work. 
So that selecting testing is done for fulfillment of that harmony. So this is how it will come, right? So this is the real self, right? There is definiteness in terms of realization and understanding. Therefore, there is a definiteness in terms of desire, thought and expression. <coughs> Therefore, there is a definiteness in terms of behavior and work. Therefore, there is a definiteness in your conduct. Right? That is the meaning of living with definite human conduct. And you can see the basic requirement for ensuring this definite human conduct is to have the right understanding. <coughs> so when we were saying right understanding, it was including realization and understanding. Then have the right feeling <coughs> here in terms of my desire. Then trying to work out the details of you know, ensuring that fulfillment of the feeling and expressing in terms of behavior and work. That is the human, that is the meaning of definite human conduct. <coughs> and for that, what is required is the right understanding and right feeling. So this is where, you know, the real self would look like. The deliberate self would mean that this part is missing. Right? You have created an image of yourself on the basis of not the understanding of coexistence and understanding of the harmony in nature, but by way of the preconditionings and the sensations which have been dumped into you, right, by your parents, by your teachers, by your society, you know, the advertisement and so on. And now you think that you are the real self, right? This is the real self. So when you go to live with this, you are really in trouble. Right? Slowly, you will see if you really start looking into it and evaluating it, okay, most of it turns out to be right, useless for you. Right? <coughs> Something which is not naturally acceptable for you. Then you realize this is what you were, right? This is what you wanted to do. And then you think that, you know, this is religion and this is, you know, I was unnecessarily carrying this load with me. <coughs> no words. But if you are coming through this, right, there is a definiteness. Definiteness in this realization and understanding. Definiteness in your desire, thought and expectation born out of this. Therefore, there is a definiteness in your behavior and work. And that is your definite human conduct. And that is what we have been talking about, right, right from the first day. The first session when we say definite human conduct, right, that is what we meant. When we said the role of education is to ensure this definite conduct, this is what we meant. So with this, I can write down three exercises, you know, which I generally write very early, but this time I thought that, okay, let me discuss everything and then write down this. <coughs> the other exercise that you have to do at the level of self, okay, there are three exercises. Three things we have to do, and one is to ensure right understanding, right feeling. Right thought, feeling is, this comes in terms of desire, right? Then you have to have right thought and finally the right behavior and work, right? And if you want to add further, participation in larger order. So you can see, right understanding is here, right feeling, 
right thought, right behavior and work rate. This is what we need to do to ensure human conduct. <coughs> Definite human conduct. Right understanding, right feeling, right thought, right behavior, work and participation in larger order. <coughs>